Right, well, catch up time again. It's, I feel like I've done this one quite recently, but yeah, back on the bank. Um, what have we got to catch up on? So last month, it was about me being very, very, very lucky and drawing me plums off and getting in the three finals. So this month, it, it's been a bit more laid back. I've been doing a bit of traveling, but I've fished some right weird matches I don't normally get to fish. So what have I been doing? So first up, it, it feels quite a while ago now, but I've fished an MAM qualifier, which is something I talk about quite often, MAM qualifiers. It's a, a match that's held a final, held at Heronbrook at the back end of the year that Dave Marshall uh, runs. It's really, really popular. Pre really popular with club anglers and, and all sorts of open match anglers and everyone. It's, it's a really good match. Um, but that's what I went to qualify for first. So I went to, I went somewhere different. I went to Bradshaw Fisheries, which is somewhere, it's not too far from my house, but I don't, I very, very rarely get to go there. So we were on lakes eight and nine on Bradshaws, which is very much snake lakey, very much like Partridge down the road. Very, I mean, um, nano snake lakes for, for, for fishing breath ones and a few carp and a few trout, a few random trout mixed in. Well, I didn't catch one. I was proper gutted about that. Um, but yeah, anyway, I've gone there. I've drawn, I've drawn peg 15, which I've been there once on this lake and I did a feature with Matt Godfrey years ago. And I've drawn next where I did the feature. So it was nice, easy, easiest walk ever. I could literally park my car on my peg. Yeah, and I've had a nice, simple match. I mean, with all you've got to do in these MAM matches is win a, I'm going to say it's a six peg section five, six, ten peg section, whatever. It's just a small section. That's all that matters. Literally, I don't even think they pay the winner of the match or, yeah, they have a little super pool. But anyway, it's all you're there for is to win your section. It's qualify for this final held in Heronbrook. So I've, I've drawn a decent peg. I've drawn sort of the end peg in my section. The, the anglers carried on, but I was the end peg in my section. My section was all to my right. No, I had one, one fella to my left. Um, everyone else was to my right. So I could see everyone that was going on. We were just on a nice little straight on a snake lake. Um, but I had sort of a bridge next to me, like the... I was like on a like a T junction of the Snake Lake, and I was sat right on the point, so that the Snake Lake actually went behind me and carried on. So I had a little bit of a bowl uh, next to me with an air rate in the middle to it that me and the chap uh, could both fish to. But I ended up not fishing that. I ended up fishing a very very simple match, my favourite sort of match. Uh, I just fished pellets across. I mean, I'm not going to go into this one in too much detail because it was dead easy. I set up two rigs for across. I set up one about that deep, one about that deep. In fact, I'm lying. I set up three rigs. I set up a little shallow rig as well. And I've just rotated them all match. It was a really nice steady day. I think I caught £120 on that one. And it, it was a weird day. It was one of them when I was almost a bit lazy, if I'm honest. I, I knew by watching, because I could see all my section, I knew I could keep ahead of the lads. But then three or four pegs away, they were bagging. They were catching like £150, £170. And I didn't need to do that. It was one of them weird occasions where it was pointless taking a risk and blowing my peg by trying to fish shallow that it may not have been right in the area I was in. And instead, I just ticked along doing what I was doing. Um, catching fish on, on these three lines across, but up, down, and down the slope a bit, just about four mil pellets, and that was enough. Do you know what I, mean? I had a lovely day, I had 100, I think I had 120 pound, which was a lot of fish, it was probably about 70, 80 F1s out, so it was a nice day. Um, yeah, it was good, so we managed to sneak in that final, so we got that to look forward to back end of October. So with that out of the way, what, what was next? I, I, I went next, something that I'd, I'd been threatening to do this year, I went and fished a Fish North qualifier, um, which Barry Zimmerman's running, that, that's, looking to be a bit of a special one now that's another a, a big money match i think that's 10 or 12 grand for the final that's a, a serious match that i'd like to qualify for that um very similar format to to many of the other competitions you have to win a 20 peg section on there there's 60 on each match you have to win a 20 peg section so we were up at the, the oaks for the, on this occasion and a section was a lake i mean we were on the new lakes which is i've always wanted to fish these new lakes in summer i've never been able to fish the new lakes up at the oaks which the weights there in the week are, are terrifying, if I'm honest. I mean, £500, I think, actually been caught up there. It's ridiculous weights. But I've always fancied to go up there. So when a ticket come available, I thought, right, I'll have some of that. And I went up there to have a go. And I drew, I drew on Sycamore, which was the biggest lake out of all of them. Um, I don't know what I drew. I'm going to say 13, but I might be wrong. It might be 15. I was two out the corner. I think I was 13. I don't know. I'm, I'm hopeless at remembering. But I think I was 13. Two out the corner. But really similar, it sounded like it was really fair. The wind was blowing into this corner where so Gandhi was opposite. He's the, the venue expert there. I thought he was going to take some stop in. Another lad was next to me in the corner with him going, but I was next one out. So I fancy it was wind would end, but looking back at it now, it's irrelevant. Those lakes are ridiculous, there's that many fish in them. So the, the wind really didn't make a difference. There were so many fish all over the place. Um, again, nice simple match there with a big weight needed. I thought you'd need 200 pound. Kept things really simple at the Oaks. It's all about edge fishing. So I plumbed up two lines down the edge, two different depths, one in about this, just in case I could get them stuck in. I had a really steep slope. 
So I had one tight in, one down a bit in about that for when it went a bit dodgy. And then I fished up and down at five meters as well with hard pellets. It, it, it had, it seems like every time I go, the oaks seems to happen. It, it poured down a couple of days before. It had really, really heavy rain for a couple of days. And every time I'm going the oaks, that happens and it knocks the new legs off a little bit. So the, the ridiculous weights weren't, weren't ever going to happen. I mean, but it also made the baits change. I mean, before it, it was all meat, meat, meat. Everyone's obsessed with, you've got to fish meat, that's what they're having. And in the warmer weather, it is definitely the, the favoured bait there, I suppose. But with it being a bit cooler, I still have my big bucket full of meat that, why I did, I don't know. I hate fishing meat. But I took some pellets as well, as, as always. I took some hard pellets and some micros and corn for down the edge. And with it being colder, I thought I'll start on them. And it was brilliant. I mean, I, I started short, um, caught a load on bottom, caught a few shallow, came in the edge, caught really well late on. But looking back now, I suffered too many quiet spells. That definitely seems to be the key of the Oaks. They're catching these big, great big weights. Not huge weights, but really good weights. It's about putting fish in your net all the time and eliminating the quiet spells. And that all comes down to uh, rotating your rigs. You know what I mean? Having different options, be it just down the edge, having three options maybe, and just swapping to them different depths to, to put a few fish in the net in the quiet spells instead of sitting and waiting for them to come back. I mean, you need to be moving. And I was a bit off the pace, just not being there before. So I'd, I'd love to go back and have another go. Uh, and I ended up that day, ended up with, I was an ounce short, 200 pound. I was 199.15, I think I had, 199 something. Yeah, but I got beat. Yeah, I got beat on me like, um, I forget that name, Andy someone. I'm sorry, I'm, I don't mean to be rude, I forget his name. I can't remember, a very, very good lad, very regular up there. Uh, he's won the lake with 230, I'm gonna say. So unfortunately, I didn't get in that one. But I've still got a couple of more chances. Uh, I've got uh, another one at the Oaks, another one at Woodlands, I'm gonna fish in that, but we'll touch on that in another, um, another month's time. Um, aside from that, two more matches I wanna cover. Uh, also fish Boddington's, a ticket popped up for Boddington's on the British Waterways match. That popped up randomly on a Thursday night, so I thought, right, I'm going. So I went down to Boddington's and really short and sweet this one. It was horrific. We, we got there the one time I've been to Boddington's in the last five, five six years, it must be. Uh, and I got there on the day they were spawning. So it was absolutely alive. All the trees opposite, it was alive with carp. I've never seen anything like it in my life. But because we're about three and a half miles opposite these trees, it took a bit of a special cast to get to them, which even Steve Rigger couldn't do that one. So we were as far away from the car as we could be. And it's been that bad. I've actually fished a roach at Boddington's for the first three hours and I've had 10 pound of roach. But then I went for a little walk, went to see Johnny Arthur, came back. And as I got back, Mick Bull, two pegs up, a quarter calf, and that spoiled the roach fun. So I ended up chucking a big feeder right into the middle of the lake with the, the big angry rod. And I got really lucky and had two poles I had two 10 pounders on that to end up with 20, oh no, yeah, 20 odd pounds. I think I had about 26 pounds. It was in kilos, I forget what I weighed. But I got lucky enough to win the section on that one. That's for the, the British Waterways Classic, which is at the end of the month. So that's another final to, to look forward to. But very, very uneventful match, unfortunately, at Boddington's, which is normally ridiculous. Um, last up of the month, this was in between bodies, but this year finally I got to fish Diamond Masters, which I seem to be able to do that every other year. It, it depends how organised I am with um, what work I've got on, what coaching I've got on, other, other commitments, things like that. But this year I managed to fish it, mainly through, through qualifying early. Um, so for me, it's as a commercial, predominantly F1 angler, I suppose. It, it, it's the biggest event in the country. All the best anglers are fishing it. it it's the best venue. You know what I mean, probably the fairest F1 venue in the country. It, it's, it's just awesome. You know I mean? It's an event, event I always want to fish and I've managed to get down there this year. Yeah, it was looking good. The tunnel had been a bit moody, as everywhere had, with the weather being up and down. The fish are desperate to spawn. So the fishing wasn't ever going to be... It wasn't going to be solid. It wasn't going to be massive weights on, on most of the lakes, on the, the general lakes. So it really suited me. I, mean, I like it when it's hard. I, I like fishing for £100. It, it suits me so much more. A bit more technical than just slapping that shallow rig and catching one a bung. And then and it comes down to the, the draw a little bit more. But no, the, the, it was looking really good. Um, and I've drawn, I'll, I'll brush it really quick, I've drawn the first two days, I've drawn Newpool, which I live on Newpool. Every time Newpool's in, I'm on Newpool. And it's been a random draw every day, so I've drawn peg six on the first day, which is a brilliant section peg. I've been, uh, no one's peg one, big gap. We've all got quite a bit of room. Uh, but I've had the wind coming at me, a really good section peg. And I've had a nice day fishing. Um, I fished up and down with maggots at six metres, and I fished maggots in the edge. I've had a load of maggots, I've had like seven or eight pints of maggots just rotating lines around my peg. Yeah, and I had a nice day catching 106 pound, which was, say it was right, but it did surprise me the first day how poor pellets were. I mean, pellets were an absolute waste of time on Newport. They didn't want to come into pellets and eat them. 
uh, on the far bank, hard pellet I'm on about, which is how I wanted to catch fish. I think that was because of the depth. I think it was just too shallow on that far bank and they didn't want to come into it. It was flat and shallow and just not nice. But I learned a lot that day. The second day I got seriously, seriously lucky. I drew in the same section, but I drew 23 on new pool, which is, it's like in the bowl at the top. There's a bowl at the top and the new pool. It's in the bowl. And on the previous day, it had been terrible. I mean, it had been in my section. I think it had been last in my section the previous day because yeah, the wind had been blowing towards peg six. I mean, off, it's, yeah, off 23's back. And for whatever reason, for one day, literally alone, I drew my peg, proper spat my dummy out, got there, put my head over the hill, and there was all scum on the water. The wind had turned round overnight and it was coming down that way. And it literally did it for one day. The next day it turned back round and they caught nothing there. But for one day, I got seriously lucky. The wind blew down my way. Yeah, and I caught a few fish, very, very similar match to the day before. Caught a few on maggots, lost my way a bit at the start, yeah, and then caught really well on ground bait and maggots in the edge last couple of hours. And I won my section, oh no I didn't, no I got beat that day, I won my section the first day. Uh, the second day I got beat, I got beat by the Dutch chap on peg one. He, he's, he's sort of the same peg as me, he's, his back's right against me at the end of the point. And he's caught really well, he's had 150 pounds shallow on the lilies. Which is really, when they, they go on peg one, it's a, a serious peg, nice and easy, just top four shallow. So he's had 150 pounds, I couldn't compete with that. I've had 116, which again got me second, so really put me in the gang going into the last day. Um, going into last day, that there was literally there was, there was one angle. There was Paul Holland on two wins, so it really was open. It, it's depending on the draw. It threw everything right, wide open, and it, it actually did. After the draw, I've never ever had a final day where everyone's looking at each other, thinking, "I well, don't know who's going to win." I mean, Paul was really unlucky and drew on paper technically the worst peg he could have drawn on twelve on high. Yeah, I'm going to say twelve on high in, in that like top bend. It's always rubbish there. So everyone felt for him a little bit after doing so well to draw a peg that you've, just, you've got no chance, you're knackered. So he's drawn in anyway, so that sort of didn't help Paul's chances. Uh, there was a few other anglers, there was uh, Matty Dawes, Matty drew a decent peg but in a good section with some good anglers, with Conor Barlow on a very good peg. Uh, Sam Collett drew an alright peg but not the best on canal. And then as myself, I drew a weird one. I drew 16 on house pool, which had been it had been rancid, it had had £40 off it the first day and it had £43. The young Matty Bingham had been on it the day before and had £43 and he'd actually drawn two up from me. And he, he just said he couldn't get bites. You know, he really, really struggled in the area. There hadn't been many fish there. All the fish had been on pegs, uh, two, four and six, which are, are really good pegs on house pool. So I thought I was against it, I was worried. But I, I must admit I was a bit confident in, in the area I'd drawn. I did actually fancy it for a few. It very much suited my style of fishing. It was. All the snake licky style fishing goes out the window because this one area on the dam wall sort of thing of house pool, I had open water to fish to. And it, it, it sort of, it's next to peg 29, which I'd won match this off a few weeks ago. You're sort of fishing like towards each other a little bit. So I knew I'd be able to fish into the same sort of area of the water. And if I was nice and patient and I did the same sort of things that I did in match this, fish the same sort of match, I might get away with it. And, and that's way it actually turned out. I fished a really, really patient match. I started on my top kit, never had a bite. Went long to 14 and a half on hard pellets. And I just sort of was just nice and patient, just kept pinging two or three pellets, laying my rig, laying my rig, laying my rig, and I'd get one and it'd be a great big F1, it'd be a three pound F1. Not not many, I mean, I was waiting five, 10, 15 minutes per bite. I'd keep laying it, laying it, and I'd get one. And so I, slowly I ticked over, and then second half of the match, I managed to bring another line in, switch me right towards the bridge, which was a bit silty. Same again, just by pinging the odd pellet, going over there, nicking one fish. and. I caught really nicely. I mean, I never bagged. I just plodded along all day, um, and I've weighed 90 pounds. I mean, I've had some nice proper fish as well. I've had three or four five-pound carp, which really helped me out. But just by not trying to force it, not panicking, and not trying to make something stupid happen that was never going to happen, just realistically expecting that this is all I can potentially do to catch fish. Just by ticking over, so I had a really, really good day. I actually managed to win the lake. And I think 40, uh, 56 pounds was second in my section off. I think it was Ronnie. No, it was Jeff on peg eight. I think it was Pete Marlow on peg eight. He was second, he was leading section when they come to me, say so I managed 90 pounds, which actually beat everyone on the island as well, which by far, that was my best day's fishing. It was technically the, the best I did it of the week. I was like, I'm quite proud of myself, to be honest, that day. So I had a lovely day just fishing fishery pellets that I'd um, sweetened up, I'd put some glycerin on them, just to stop them breaking down, and just picked off fish, fish nice and gearly, got the O10 out for the first time. And say, so, fortunately, that was enough. That gave me um, two wins in a second, so four points, and I managed to win. I mean, it absolutely made up to win that. That's, that's, it could well be the highlight of my year. That, that's 
an event I've always wanted to get my name on a trophy, just being the type of angler that I am, being a commercial angler, that's the event. I mean, that's the one that proves that you're in the gang of kiddies that can do a good F1 angler. So it's lovely to win that. Got a nice shiny pole that I had in my possession for about 30 seconds uh, and a nice big load of cash. But yeah, it was a, a lovely way to end my month that finally getting the, the Daiwa uh, Masters, my name on that trophy. So that was a, a lovely one. Can't wait for next year. But so what are we doing today? Uh, today, that's me fishing done. Today, we're out filming with me crazy mate yet again. I've been out with him. We've got the sky cameras with us at the minute and we are just starting to get ready now for Fisho. So we've got Fisho coming up in two weeks-ish, a bit less than two weeks, week and a half. So the chaos is well and truly underway. I've literally had a practice session here yesterday up at Afield, uh, and that's it now. I'm, I'm gonna settle down at home, do a bit of coaching, and get all my kit ready. We've got a hell of a lot of kit this year, but with the venue being so unknown. So I'm gonna see what goes on, set up a, a pretty much the kitchen sink on the day, and see if we can get it right. But yeah, other than that, we're all looking good, and hopefully next month I'll be able to catch up and tell you that I've won a massive big check again, but we'll see how it goes.